All right, guys. Worksheet six, day two. Today we're going to review some stuff we did yesterday. We're also going to work on writing equations. So you will have to write an equation of an ellipse given the center or the vertices and foci or the length of a major minor axis or the endpoints of the major minor axis. All those are possible. You will also have to be able to complete the square and find eccentricity. And we're going to talk about eccentricity today. All right. This looks familiar. What can you tell me about an ellipse from yesterday? What can you tell me about the equation? A is the bigger number, okay? And these are A squared and B squared. So the difference between this one and this one is the A is under the X, so it's longer horizontally. Here the A is under the Y, so it's longer vertically, okay? And you always have to have the equation. It's going to be important when we complete this square later. It's got to equal 1 at the end, right? And I told Blurt I'd look something up, and I didn't yesterday, so that's my bad. All right. So, number one, is this what you have? Little warm-up problems? And this little warm-up prob problem, yep, I can talk, requires that we do what? Okay, we're going to have to complete this square, so we're going to take a 4 out of both of the x terms. So we'll have what? x squared minus 2x plus a blank. Okay. And what are we going to take out of the y terms? I'm rearranging at the same time. Is everybody okay with that? So if I take a 9 out, the y terms are here and here. I'll have y squared, what? Minus 4y plus blank equals. And then if I move the constant over to the other side, make sure you make it a negative 4. And I'm going to end up adding two things to it. All right, so this becomes 4 times the quantity what? Yes, or after we factor that would be x minus 1 quantity squared. Is everybody okay? Half of that, then we square it. So now we have a 4 times 1. 4 times a 1 goes in that blank, or just a 4. It's fine. I just write in where it came from. Plus 9. What happens when we do this one? Minus 2 squared up here becomes a positive 4, and that's 9 times 4, which is 36. And since we had a negative 4 plus a positive 4 plus a 36, we end up with a 36. Okay? Are we done? No, the form on our sheet, we got to divide everything by 36. And let's see, this 4 goes in here 9 times, and this 9 goes in here 4 times, and this is 1. So we end up with x minus 1 squared over 9, y minus 2 over 4 equals 1. Yes? Good? All right. That was a whole lot of fun to get nowhere. Now what? What can you tell me about this? <clears throat> Some of you need to practice writing the equation next to it, right? This is going to have the a squared under here. So h is what? 1, k is 2, a is 3, b is 2, c is the square root of what? 
B squared, it says on your sheet, is A squared minus B squared, yes? So 9 minus 4 or 5 would be the C all by itself. All right, if I do this conceptually, I'm going to go to the center, which we need to write down at some point, which is 1, 2. And then I'm going to go out three in either direction, up, down, or left, right. It, the three was under the X, so it's left, right, which makes those vertices um, one plus or minus three comma two. So we have four, two, and negative two, two. All right, the co-vertices, we're going where? In the y direction, we go up and down 2. So that would be 1, 2, plus or minus 2, or just here and here. So that would be 1, 4, and 1, 0. The only other thing we have to do for an ellipse is the foci and they are always on which axis the longer one the major axis okay so they are out from the center a distance of square root of five one yep foci are at one plus or minus the square root of five comma two which this is like 2.2, so we'd have like 3.2, 1, 2, 3.2, and 1 minus 2.2 would be like negative 1.2, I think. So somewhere in there. How many of you actually practiced this last night? Good job, all four of you. Okay. All right. Ooh, another completing the square. Can you try this one on your own? Somebody want to come up on the board and do it? Did I get the equation right? Anybody get that far yet? So H is 1, K is 5, A is 5, B is 3, C is the square root of 25 minus 9, which is Four, isn't it? Sixteen square sixteen is four. So HK is one five. Does it go off the graph paper? Did I count wrong? Doesn't it go up and down five? Goes off the top of the graph paper by one.
All right, I'm going to pretend I'm using the recipe sheet to double check all my answers. Because A is underneath the Y, it says HK is the center. I already did that. Then it says the vertices are at H comma K plus or minus A, which would be 110 and 10. The co-vertices are at H plus or minus B comma K. So 4, 5, and negative 2, 5. All that seems like the right things I graphed up there, right? That makes the foci are at H, comma, plus or minus K. No, 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 no. I can read K plus or minus C, which is... 5 plus or minus 4. So 1, 9, and 1, 1, which is where I put them here and here. All right. So I graphed it conceptually, but then I used the recipe to find all those points and check that they were right on my graph. One way to do it as a double check. Any questions? Yes. Yes, because what does it say on here? It says that the number underneath there is A squared and B squared. You good? Does that make sense? Anybody else? All right, we're going to try writing an equation. It says, write an equation for an ellipse. Oh, yeah, I think I put this on the quiz. I think this is easy. Let's 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 sketch. I like to sketch first. Negative six, positive two, negative six, negative eight. Negative three, negative three. And negative nine, negative three. Is that really that hard to write an equation for? Okay. Whoa. Hmm? Clearly that's an ellipse. <clears throat> a very pointy ellipse. All right. How are we going to find the center? We can do the midpoint of Either one of those pairs, right? We could do the midpoint here or the midpoint here. Anybody see an even easier way to do it? These two line up along what x? Negative 6. And these two line up along... Okay. That is the midpoint. Negative 6 plus negative 6 is negative 12. Divided by 2 is negative 6. 2 plus negative 8 is negative 6, divided by 2 is negative 3. Over here, same thing. Okay, so we found the center. We're almost done. x plus 6 quantity squared plus y plus 3 quantity squared equals 1. Yes? How close we are. Okay. What do we need underneath here? Well, we need to know how far it went in the x direction, right? Now, if you look at the graph, that's pretty good. The problem is if you do the distance formula from here to here, guys, eyeball this, think about this. This number didn't change, right? And how far apart were these? Six. But be careful, that's all the way across is six. So it went how far in each direction? Three and three. Now that's the minor axis, so it's really B. But it was going underneath which one? The X, because it's going across. But this is where you got to be careful, because it is a B squared under here. So what goes down here is 9. Okay? 
in the y, all right, if you did the distance, the negative 6 didn't change, but from 2 to negative 8 is how far of a distance? Be careful. Think about your number line. Positive 2 all the way down to negative 8 is a distance of 10. Everybody good with that? Okay. So if that distance is 10, it's actually the whole major axis is 10. So this piece is 5 either way. So what goes down here is a... If you get the concepts, I think those are pretty easy. Didn't have to do a lot of calculating, but... All right. Ooh, this one looks more painful. All right. Vertices. Again, sketching helps me. Negative 12, positive 6 is out here somewhere. Positive 4, positive 6 is up here. Okay, what do you know right away? You know a whole bunch of stuff. If those are the vertices, not the co-vertices, you know that's the major axis. Okay, can we find the center? the midpoint of either of one of those right so what is the midpoint here negative 12 plus 4 6 plus 6 well it's going to be 6 this is negative 8 divided by 2 is negative 4 does that work okay so the middle is negative 4 6 we're almost done again x plus 4 quantity squared plus y minus 6 quantity squared equals 1. You can tell me something else, though. What can you tell me? How long is this major axis from here all the way to here? From negative 12, 6 to positive 4, 6 was it from negative 12 to 4 is 16 units. But be careful. That means it went 8 each way, and that's going to be the A, right? Because it's the major one where the vertices are. Okay. And it was going out on the X's. All right. I got to admit, this is a tricky one. Finding B is tricky because they don't tell us anything else. But what can we find? The C. If this is negative 10, 6, and positive 2, 6, some of you know C right away because C is the distance you went out to the focus, okay? But let's use a formula just to make us feel a little bit better like we could do it if we had to. When it, we know the major axis is running this way, what does it say for foci? H plus or minus C comma K, is that what it says on your paper? And we already know H and K are what? Here's our center. Negative 4 plus or minus C comma K, yes? So how did they get this right here? to equal negative 10 or positive 2, what did they add or subtract? 6. Negative 4 plus or minus C gave them negative 10, for example. So we get C equals negative 6, and it was a plus or minus. It didn't matter. C is 6 because it went out 6 either way. All right, so if C is 6 and A is 8, how do we find B? Well, the formula says c squared equals a squared minus b squared, 36 equals 64 minus what? If I subtract, what do I get here? Negative, somebody help me, 28? Is that right? That is negative b squared though, right? So we can change the negative and we get b squared is 28. We don't have to graph this because it would be up or down the square root of 28. But what goes here is b squared, so it's just the 28. And that wasn't a pretty number. 
I didn't put one like that on the quiz. Oh, I like these kind. I can do this. Can you do this? Try this one. Talk to your neighbor. Who's got a center for me? Negative two, positive two. Someone get that for the center? We're almost done then, right? So we're going to have an x plus 2 and a y minus 2. And it's a plus and it's a equal to 1. Now what? Underneath the y, he said is 36. Where did we get that? How far, how long is this? Vertice to vertice is major axis, right? How far apart is negative 4 from positive 8? 12. So it was 6 up and 6 down. So this is 36 in the Y. Good job. Even easier here, right? If this whole minor axis is 10, then it was how far each way? Five, but what goes down here is 25. I didn't think that one was too bad. Okay, oh, uh, is this a lot harder? It's a little harder, but the center is still the center of the foci, right? So we get negative 2, 1 plus 7 is 8, divided by 2 is 4. All right. Um, yeah, I got to figure out how it lines up. I like to graph negative 2, positive 1, negative 2, positive 7. If the foci, now it, that means it goes this way, right? Because the foci are on the major axis somewhere, but that that's not the end of it. But the major axis is 10 long, and it must be going up and down through the foci. So what does that mean? A is 5, yep. And that goes underneath the Y, and it doesn't become a 5. It's a 25. Okay. Then we got to do a little work because they gave us a hint about C. It says the foci are at H comma K plus or minus C. So we have negative 2 comma 4 plus or minus C became negative 2, 1 or negative 2, 7. doesn't matter which one you used. So 4 plus or minus C equals 1. I got C as 3, is that right? 1 and 4 subtracted give me 1 and, oh, let me say that again. 4 plus or minus 3 gives me 1, and 4 plus or minus 3 gives me 7. All right, so if C is 3, is this a 9 under here? No, we got to find B. What's the formula? 
B squared equals A squared minus B squared. C squared, we said it was 3 squared or 9. A squared is 25. What's 9 minus 25? Negative 16 is negative B squared, so B squared is 16. So it would go 4 either direction, but I don't really care. I just need to B squared under this, right? That was tricky. I don't think I gave you one like that either, but it's good concepts. All right, we're going to talk about eccentricity. The definition of eccentricity is basically how stretched something is. All right, that's the concept. The actual definition is the distance between the foci divided by the distance between the vertices. All right, eccentricity is always a number between 0 and 1. Anybody know what the eccentricity of a circle is? Think about what I did yesterday up here. How far apart were the foci? when I made it into a circle, zero, okay? So a circle, remember when I put the piece of tape right on top of each other, I got a circle. So a circle has no stretch. That kind of makes sense? Okay. The weird one is the other extreme. The parabola has an eccentricity of 1. This is how I remember it. It has one focus and one vertex, right? So when it says the distance between them and the distance between them, I just think of there's one of each, so its eccentricity is 1. That's how I remember it, okay? Now, we're going to do eventually both hyperbolas and ellipses, and they're going to fall in between 0 and 1. Here, it goes through that on your paper. Do you all have this? What did we say here? Zero was a circle, right? Okay, one is a parabola. If it's less than one, it's an ellipse. If it's greater than one, it's going to break that ellipse apart, flip it around, it's going to become a hyperbola. We'll talk more about that next week because you guys get time off. <clears throat> okay, so this is zero. A circle. This is 0 0.32, 0 0.71, 0 0.94. So the closer to one it gets, the more stretched it gets, okay? You don't have to know any of that. Actually, you don't have to memorize anything because the very bottom of your green sheet, do you see where it says that? It says eccentricity equals C over A. And if you flip it over, we haven't gotten here yet, but there's another little notice about eccentricity right here, a little paragraph I put on there for you. It says, the formula for eccentricity is the same for all conics, E equals C over A. Okay, and it says, for an ellipse, it's greater than zero but less than one. For a hyperbola, it's always greater than one, okay? So that's just for a double check for you. All right, so we need C over A. Eccentricity equals C over A. Do we know A from looking at this? A squared is 100, so A is 10. What about this guy? B squared is 9. B is 3, but I really don't even care because it says to find C, I need what? If I look at the formula, it straight up says... A squared minus B squared. Do you remember Hofbauer's hint about that? Remembering which way the formula goes? You'll always have your sheet. But if this is a plus, then to find C, you subtract, remember? It's going to be the opposite for hyperbola. So we get C is what? Square root of 91. That's beautiful. Over A, which is 10. Okay, divide that out. I want a decimal. You can give me exact answer on the quiz. I'd, I'd rather leave it like that. But the check for this, remember, is that it has to be what? Less than 1. Did that come out less than 1? 0.95. Actually, that means this is pretty long and skinny, right? Okay. 
which should make sense to you. It went 10 out one way and only three out the other, right? All right, let's try these two real fast. You try them both and then I'll tell you if you got them right. A squared, B squared, A squared, B squared. Ooh, what'd they do on seven? They switched the Y and the X, but does it matter for what we're doing? No. Anybody get six? Three over five or point six, yes? Because this is square root of nine, which is three, and A right there was five. Okay? What about this? Something ugly, isn't it? Square root of 55 over eight, which is point nine three. Which one is rounder? Six would be closer to a circle. All right. Couple fun applications, or maybe not so fun, I don't know. A whispering gallery at a museum. Has anybody been someplace where they did this experiment where like you stood a certain place and you could hear things from all over in the room? Or I even sat in a restaurant once. It was freaky because they had a domed ceiling and I could like perfectly hear conversation from somewhere else. Right. So the issue guys is when you have an ellipse, if you stand at the focal point, okay. And someone is standing somewhere else, the sound bounces here. Did you ever go, they used to have at the discovery center, this thing where you like put a ball or a coin in and it had two holes down there and you didn't know why there was two holes and why it always wound up going in again those are those are at the focal points all right backing up here okay a whispering gallery in museum is shaped an ellipse 84 feet long and 64 feet wide this way okay Write an equation. Assume the center's at the origin and it's horizontal. Did I draw mine horizontal? Longer horizontally, right? So we're supposed to assume this is zero, zero right here in the middle. So what would that look like? Plus y squared, because it's at zero, zero, right? Equals one. How far does it go in from the center? If it's a total of 84, be careful, what's half of 84? 42 each way, so under here has to go a 42 squared, a very large number. 1,007, thanks. And up and down? Oh, I wrote 64, thank you. I was looking up here, I was going to use 46, but I wrote it wrong over there. Thank you. 46 up and down, so it's 23 squared. 529. Thank you. Okay, find the location of the foci. How do we do that? C is the square root of 1764 minus 529. What's that? 12 something. Square root of 1235, which is about, is, okay, 35.1. So if this is zero, zero, remember we were pretending this was zero, zero, they would be at what? Approximately plus or minus 
35.1, is that what you said? Yeah. Comma zero. So if you were trying to spy on somebody, you'd find the middle of the room and go about 35 feet to your left or right along the longer major axis and stand there and listen to everybody, right? Okay. Number nine, I think I took this question off the homework, but there was one like this on the homework. It says a sign is in the shape of an ellipse. The eccentricity is 0.6 and the length is 48. This is a good question. So if it's 48, go in this way, and E is 0.6, could we make that a fraction maybe? Three-fifths. Okay. Write an equation of the ellipse if the center is at the origin and the major axis is horizontal. Again, I got lucky and drew it the right direction. Okay. What do you know? If this is at 0, 0, you know x squared, y squared equals 1. What does this tell you if it's 48 going this way? A is, A is 24, and 24 squared is? 576, okay. How is that eccentricity going to help us? It's C over A. I don't think C is 3 because A is not 5. How can we do that? Can we make a little proportion? 3 is to 5 defines C over A, right? And we know A is. 24 or so 3 times 24 divided by 5 just give me a decimal up here c is 14.4 okay that's not super helpful because we want b c squared equals a squared minus b squared well c squared is 14.4 squared a squared was 576, right? Okay, 14.4 squared minus 576. Oh, ah, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. Stop. I got gobbledygook. 368.64, someone get that? Right after I changed the sign because it was a negative B squared, then if I square root that, if I get 19.2, B is 19.2, B squared is 368.64, so there's the equation, disgusting. But how high is the sign this way? 19.2 this way and 19.2 this way, which would be about 38.4, did it have unit? Inches. So there's it. Interesting question, putting all those concepts together, but I didn't put it on the homework. So, A semi-elliptical arch is to be designed to be the headboard of a bed frame. Anybody's headboard that shape at home? I don't have a headboard either, but uh, it's not really, a lot of them aren't a perfect half circle, right? So they're kind of stretched. Okay. It will have a height of 2 at the center and a width of 5 at the base. All the way across is 5. Okay. Guess how the guy's going to make this on a piece of wood? No, it's not a circle. He's going to do the string thing to make a perfect ellipse. So he needs the foci. Okay. What do we know right now? Okay, the way we have it drawn, yes. A is how long? A is 2.5. B is 2. Can we find C? So A squared minus B squared equals C squared. This is what? 6.25 minus 4. Did I do that right? 
is it 2.25, which is 1.5? That's kind of scary that I could do that. Okay, so what did he do? He found the center, and then he's going to measure what? 1.5 feet out each way, and he's going to nail a string and draw his... Ellipse, half of an ellipse. Okay. Where should he place the fossa in order to stretch, sketch the arch? 1.5 feet from the center. Is that good enough? I, I didn't ask a question like that, but it's good. All right. I like this application too. This is a circular retention pond is getting larger. It's overflowing by flooding the nearby land. This is actually a circle question. Graph the circle that represents the water, okay? We're supposed to use, these are counting by 50s, right? And it says it starts, the pond is true hundred out, so that would go to here, and to here, and to here, and to here, right? Mine is stretched funny because that doesn't look like a circle on my graph paper. All right, graph the circle and find the distance from the center of the pond to the house. Okay, guys, how far is this? Center of the pond to the house. Look at the picture over here. The radius is still 200, right? So 900 yards to the house. If the pond continues to overflow the same rate, the radius is going out 100 more yards every day. So it's already starting here. How many days till it hits the house? If it goes out another 100, another 100, another 100, seven days. Write an equation for the circle of water, an equation for the circle of water when it reaches the house. Well, if we just said it was at the origin, it would be x squared plus y squared. The current radius would be what? 200. Is that the number that goes there, though? It's r squared. 200 squared is 4 with four zeros, right? 40,000. When it reaches the house, what's the radius of the large area of water that it's now flooded? 900. It is a lot of water. All right. Just I, for those of you who think this is never, ever used anywhere, I threw some applications on there for you. All right. Okay. This is, whoa, 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 whoa. This is your homework, and you can get ahead and work on worksheet 11, which has some more parabola review. Because that parabola review is what some of you didn't do well on the quiz, okay? The last part about worksheet 11 is actually not on your homework check sheet, so I'm going to be adding a few problems next week. So Monday, Tuesday, we're going to do hyperbolas. Wednesday, we're going to review. Thursday, I'm gone, and you're going to have time to do some extra practice. Friday's the quiz. And I'm not gone for a vacation, okay? Thank